to introduce you guys to two look-alike bolides. Both are infrequent, both like hardwoods, and they can usually be found near one another. This is the viscid bolete, Areopolitis araporis, and this is the clustered bolete, Areopolitis anixis. It'll have golden mycelia at the base. You'll have to dig it up to see that. Bright yellow pores. The stem is usually very tapered or noticeably tapered. Narrow at the apex where it meets the cap, bulbing out as it goes down and then getting narrow again where it clusters and groups together. articulation on the stem. There is really no absolute. In boletes we kind of wish there would be, but typically there's no reticulation on either of these. At the base of this stem there's some rosy blushing usually and is not notably tapered. The caps on both of these mushrooms can be from tawny brown to yellow, rosy brown sometimes. Typically this one is more rosy than the clustered bolete. There'll be white mycelia at the base of this one. This mushroom is edible, but it is not fabulous. And as I said, it's infrequent. Hi guys, I got a couple of neat mushrooms I wanted to show you here. These here. starting to bleach out so they're not perfect examples. A perfect example of this would be almost a dome shaped mushroom growing on dead wood with this peachy color and then this beautiful netting. Now the camera might be able to pick up and focus in on the netting that's present on this cap. And it would be white when it's fresh which contrasts this peachy color in a very unique way. And as it ages, of course, it begins to lighten up. Now this mushroom is very infrequent, except for spots where it flourishes. And these are really small areas. In Southern Indiana, there are areas down there where this mushroom is quite frequent, but in Michigan, it is quite infrequent. I'll have to try to locate some photos for this footage to get a prime example of the specimen. Again, the wrinkled netting on top of that, or it resembles netting. And then of course, the underneath side, the gills, the crowded gills. Now when this mushroom is really fresh, and the example of this mushroom is good here with this offset curved stem, you can see the peachy hue to the gills and the peachy color to the cap and as it's getting older it's definitely fading but this is the wrinkled peach mushroom and the odor of this mushroom has been one that I've always enjoyed unfortunately this mushroom is listed as unknown concerning its edibility 
you can see that peachy color in there it's just striking but when this mushroom is fresh and you see that white netting on its cap that offsets this peachy color growing on dead wood uh, Rhodotus palmatus it's one of those mushrooms it was on my bucket list for quite a while when I finally did find it in southern Indiana I found it in its pristine and I was certainly impressed but to find it in, in Michigan is extremely rare it's a neat mushroom and it's one that I wish was edible. We can wish, right? Another one that I found, I was ecstatic because it's super rare. And unfortunately, the bloom of it is usually very, very small. And one time, Dawn and I found this mushroom where it was about half the diameter of my pinky nail, which was this big, beautiful flush or bloom or whatever you want to call it this is a mushroom that's always present but rarely fruits very rarely fruits this is the green elf cup chlorosiboria augenentes i do believe i'll have dawn put that on the screen and i'm going to see if the magnifying glass helps the gopro at all try to hold the magnifying glass steady. Dawn has a steady hand with the camera, but that doesn't mean I have a steady hand with the magnifying glass. Hopefully the, that picks it up. But this is definitely one of my favorite non-edible mushrooms to find in the woods. When I find it, I'm always excited because I only get to see it about once every five or six years. And it's never where I think it's going to be. The green elf cup. Let's go see what else we can find. This is the blue staining bolete. This will, it's a gyroporus, this will stain blue very rapidly. Now this is an edible mushroom. It's a blue stainer that breaks the rules. See it has a white pore surface. A bun colored top, usually a cream to white stalk. The whole mushroom bruises very easily. There's one more down here you can see. I'm going to cut this cap. Show you how fast it stains blue. These are strikingly beautiful mushrooms. I never find them more than one or two at a time. But there's one more right down here. Dawn's going to show you what it looks like in the wild. And then I will cut that because we are harvesting mushrooms today. Pores, not gills. This is a gyroporus. What do you say it was? Belbia incarnata. It is parasitic to sterium, which is false turkey tail. Okay, so you know this is no protect, right? Some, just because it's cool see the slime on the top of that on top of that this is the green parrot mushroom I haven't seen it since I was a kid. It's pretty cool.
I love finding these. This is not an edible mushroom. Pycnophorus cinnabarinus. It's a beautiful polypore. Grows on wood, it's not edible. But if you ever run across these bright, bright orange, beautiful cinnabar colored bracket mushrooms, now you know what it is. I wanted to end this video with something that I learned several years ago and a little bit of foraging. We have black trumpets. In my mind, black trumpets are one of the most difficult mushrooms to find. But once you find black trumpets, remember that spot because they will return. I did have a place that was burned out one year and it took them four years to come back. This is a spot that I harvested twice already this year. And the last time I harvested it was three weeks ago. That's something that I wanted to talk about. With some mushrooms, you can harvest multiple times. Black trumpets is one of those mushrooms. There are patches of black trumpets that I have that they only come up once a year. But this particular patch and one other that I know of, I can harvest black trumpets from when they first come up in August all the way into October. Three cuttings is what I usually get. And I return to each patch every couple of weeks. When I find them, I usually don't take them all. I usually take just a few. I do dehydrate them. I take just a few and I leave the small ones and return in two to three weeks and I have another cutting. Another mushroom that I featured several times in my videos, one of the reasons I continue to show this is because it is a rare mushroom. I got lucky years ago and I found one on this tree and I've been returning to this tree every year it doesn't show up every year, but in years that it does show up, I usually get more than one cutting. Earlier this year, I took two off of this tree and left another to spore out. And here it is. It was bigger than my hand. I left it spore out. I think this tree is getting old enough that it needs to find a new host. Fistulina hepatica and black trumpets both you can harvest multiple times and if you're lucky enough to find this beautiful rare mushroom remember the tree. If you're lucky enough to find black trumpets remember the spot and return to it every year. Safe and happy foraging, everyone.